This is Primitive Outfitting, and you are listening to The Gritty Bowman. Bam, chicken, wow, wow. <laughs> bow, bow. Nice. <laughs> and I'm not standing on my high horse saying, I shoot a self-bow, because there's no way in hell I'm shooting a self-bow. <laughs> when I say that, I mean that in a good Christian way. As far as Cecil goes with me, I mean, I could really give a sh- crap about that lion too much. And all I was looking at was the tip of Aaron's arrow. <laughs> and it was like this and this, and then it was kind of shaking, and then it went... Boom, solid like a rock, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. It- <laughs> and he's like, I gotta know if you hit anything or not. You never really show excitement, because I don't. I just, I'm yeah. kind of always mellow. And this thing, you're ready to jerk a tear. I was running around like an idiot. <laughs> Woo! You know, if you ever talk to anybody from Africa, they're all about hunting lines, because they eat people. Yeah. The compound, I have total confidence. With this thing, I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but the way that America works, we're so soft, like, softer than baby all of us basically the uh the shooting errors i'm gonna call it matrix effect i panicked good morning everyone welcome to the gritty bowman podcast i'm here with jeff lander with primitive outfitting and uh we're here in alberta in what is it empress 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 yeah we did a podcast a few minutes ago on the uh the mule deer hunt um of uh, the actual stock and the hunt of, of my mule deer. And uh, without seeing too many squirrels, we did that, which I was amazed. And uh, But there's been a bunch of questions if I'm going to keep shooting the trad bow, arrow setup, some, a lot of trad questions I've got in general, which in most ways you're much more equipped to handle them. You've been uh, hunting traditional archery for ever. How long? Uh, 84. 85 somewhere in there yeah, 84 85 <coughs> so and you're obviously primitive outfitting is the name of your business so you're serious about it and uh so he's he's obviously been in the game way longer than me i just started um but yeah after I mean, brian and i are going to do a podcast at the end of the year and kind of talk about what i've learned and kind of a recap of going from shooting at a, a pretty very efficient level with a compound to shooting um you know, the struggle stick, a recurve for a longbow or traditional in general. But uh, what, uh, you know, I mean, over the years, you now you snap shoot a bit. I don't know. I mean, it's, it, yeah, it would be, it's called the hill method, which is probably outdated now. It's just how I learned. Yeah. So it's just up, back, as soon as I'm where I'm at, it's gone, right? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I guess you could call that snap. And I've tried to <laughs> switch over. I've, I had a, all my bows were in the mid 60s and, I can't shoot those anymore with the shoulders and whatever. So I dropped down to 50, 51, shooting that Centaur longbow. But uh, so I tried, I played around with all sorts of things like shooting a, a tab, three under, trying to hold it like like uh, like the clumps taught you. Psychologically, I cannot do it. I yeah. cannot hold an arrow. I don't know what it is. And and I shoot fine the way I shoot, but I kind of like the... Uh, the way that how proficient that, that you guys get when you're holding your draw so it's good for new people to to learn to do it i think that way right consistent anchor is key so i, I it's i mean it's been good for me mm-hmm. um i mean i can't thank the, the clones enough for for you know whatever showing me how to to shoot um i mean because i went basically brian i think you might have been attached to that text at christmas where i said i'm going to Somewhere on Christmas, New Year's, I was like, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm getting rid of all my compounds. I'm, I'm going traditional. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did a podcast on long distance shooting, the ethical shooting distance, basically. Mm-hmm. And I got a little bit of hate mail from that. Well, I got a lot of bit of hate mail from that. Got a lot of support from that, for being honest. And uh, basically, it was one of those, uh, you know, learn how to hunt type of a things in a lot of ways. Cause I've taken some pretty far shots, been successful taking far shots at, at animals. And so I kind of thought, well, let's give it a whirl and, mm-hmm. you know, see what happens. Right. To see if I get, cause I, I have the discipline to train, you know, I, I like to, I like practicing and, and, uh, so I think I picked it up in January and it's been a whirlwind of, uh, it's been a hell of a learning uh, not just shooting, right? Stalking, hunting. You have to kind of re, I don't know, refine yourself doesn't sound right, but you have to redesign some of your hunting strategy, especially when you run around like a dingling like me a little bit more than you probably should. Um, 
So what? I mean, what? Because you've you you're pretty upfront too. You've missed a lot. You've killed a lot. Both. You passed up on a stone sheep. It. What distance was it? The story. Which one? The one that you couldn't you went couldn't quite get in, and Gary handed you the gun. Oh yeah. And it was a monster, and you said, "I'd rather just." shoot it with the stick bow yeah i mean yeah sometimes i regret that but uh <laughs> i had a self bow i had one of john strunk's self bows and you know i was you kind of get into that mode of you know i kind of went through the better than you kind of stage where you're, you're you know even shot an elk with a big bull with a flint tip that didn't go very well broke on his rib when it hit and yeah that's when i quit shooting self bows and, yeah um but anyway uh yeah yeah, that was a nice ram, and, and I don't know why I should have, part of me thinks, but I've been stone hunting since. I still haven't killed one. Yeah. Missed one this year, but uh, yeah, you got to be prepared to uh, shoot less. I mean, you're, you're not experiencing that. I mean, you're you're on a roll, so right now life is good, but you're going to hit the, the lulls of... Uh, you talked about that yesterday. Yeah, you're you're will, like, are you going to you stick with it if you don't have a good year, which... I mean, I as a first year shooting a trad bow, in some ways it's like, did I start off too good? Like next year is it going to be? I mean, you never, I guess, too good, but be interesting. After the mule deer, I told you I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stick with the stick. It's a sign, right? I mean, to me, it's a sign. Yeah, it's I, what you it, enjoy shooting, man. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 if it's a compound or if it's, whatever, as long as guys are and gals are enjoying it, I mean, what more can you ask for? But for you. You get a lot of people who pretty much probably don't like you very much. Yeah, there's a few. Out and they there. want you to fail. Yeah. And you're not failing. Yeah. And you're pissing them off. That is awesome. I get some back channel emails <laughs> that are pretty funny. What emails I'm not supposed to get that get forwarded to me uh -huh. like, hey, read what this guy said or text. And I, I like those because uh, the grizzly hunt. Didn't get a grizzly. Um, and immediately. I mean, and it's a grizzly, right? Not the easiest thing a mountain grizzly to kill with a bow. And uh, immediately... I get some back channel like, oh, he's not as good as he thought he was, I guess. Well, and then I just shot that deer. So I'm kind of, it does warm my heart a little bit. Like I can't kill, no one can be successful all the time. You just can't do it. With the no. stick, it is just a whole new set of problems. Um, well, not problems. It's a whole new, the, the parameters have sucked in from about 100 yards to about 25 to 35 of uh you know what you could do with it so. your stock begins where where with the recurve where where the hunt ends with the compound basically yeah yeah, yeah. i would say a hundred percent that is true because now and uh brian who's he's playing with his gear over there brian has is he gives me crap constantly about moving too fast which i do um but i mean and when i find an animal bedded or whatever i can go slow but I have had to, um, I cannot get away with popping a deer up at 60 and just dropping it. Like there's that buffer that, that you have of safety, especially when you're super very proficient with a compound, you don't have it with a stick bow. You don't right. have that buffer of, of, uh, of distance that, that so you, you do, you have to go slower. You have to do a lot of things different to me. Uh, you have to practice 10 times more than you do with a compound, um, and I and I was lucky to have the coaching I I had mm -hmm. um, to to shoot, and I can shoot pretty proficiently. I mean, that first night, what was it, forty yards? I was laying them in the the Reinhardt eighteen and one at forty, pretty good at low light, which is about as good as I get. And and initially too, and we've talked about all this before. Um, I uh, my initial, you know, shot distance shrunk very quickly as mm -hmm. the season went on because it's not foam and with a compound for me people can say it's not foam and i'm like i don't know i mean i've never had, i haven't had a whole lot of animals get out of the way with the compound when i've chosen to shoot them now with you what would you say success wise one in five one at one shot at every five animals you've shot at you you've killed one or every five stocks 10 stocks what do you think yeah yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. I tend to try to forget the ones that I missed. Yeah. Let's go last year. <laughs> last year I had missed three really big mule deer. Yeah. And the year before, yeah, I mean, if you're not shooting, you're not collecting. I mean, yeah. and, and that's not stupid shots. It's just 
I'm an idiot and I missed. But uh, yeah, and probably you're... one in. I would say one in. I don't even know. Well, I you know throw it one in five maybe. Yeah, I I would I would say um, you know and you and you told and you 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 you're very good about things. Your voice for one, it just echo. It's like my football coach Jim Perkins. <laughs> it echoes things he said, and it will echo my life forever. But you like the uh, and the we talked about in the other podcast and the lesson today is and it was about pushing the deer. Well, you know the other um, there's other things that you've said throughout the you know me shooting a bow, which kind of echo uh, which have, have rang very very true. And I mean the um, the stock the, the you know the stock beginning uh, where it stops with a compound mm-hmm. is a hundred percent true. Um, and I mean. Brian and I talking about, uh, y- you know, you said that eventually I'll stop saying I could have killed it with a compound. And that has not happened yet, by the way. It will, I'm sure. But um, it, in comparison, I would say, what do you think we could have killed? 20, 20 bulls? Yeah, I mean, I hear you say that a lot because it's true. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it just is. And, it, and, it, and I'm not, I haven't stopped doing that yet, but when you kind of figure out guys thinking, I guess what I'm trying to get across guys thinking of switching to a compound, to a stick bow, you are definitely doing it for the enjoyment of shooting the stick bow more than piling up animals in the back of the truck Mm -hmm. or whatever, because, uh, it's just more difficult. It is what you like, you know I mean? Once you start shooting them and and you're not going to destroy as many arrows because when you're stump shooting, I mean, Brian's not going to take his, Hoyt Defiant out there and stump shoot is... He is defiant. Well, that's true. <laughs> but he's not going to... I mean, it'd bust arrows all over the place for a week and it'd go all day shooting, right? Yep. But... I, I thoroughly enjoy shooting the recurve far more than a compound. It's not even close. Um, I enjoy shooting, you know, when you first get into compound archery and you're excited, that kind of... Like now, I, I just... I love shooting a stick bow. I mean, there's not one time where I'm not fully enjoying... Yeah. Shooting it, playing arrows. I mean, even when I'm shooting bad, I'll just shoot at ten yards because then you know what I mean. I I can you know I scoot closer. But and they're more fun when you miss a big animal and you throw them like a boomerang. Yeah, <laughs> I've done that. Bust a longbow on a goat hunt. <laughs> you, you told me about. I haven't gotten to that point yet. It I makes missed. a neat sound. It's like whoo, 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 when it's flying through the kind air. Kind of a rubber band when it breaks. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've missed. Uh, let's think about this in. Brian nod your head occasionally. He's packing his stuff. I missed opening day of mule deer three times. I, I hit that elk up in the leg and uh, missed an elk and I missed a gimme in Idaho. I mean, like up close and personal You're in your face. <laughs> That's funny. 12 yards away in Idaho because I wasn't ready. Um, and I uh, missed this mule deer yesterday. And, but I, I mean, I've killed a lot too. I mean, I've been lucky enough with the bear with you. I missed that the first shot hit between its legs and it didn't, they thought something broke and everybody told me, including you, the clums, you're going to be able to shoot more than once at a lot of animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. They're right. They are. Now the mule deer here, he didn't hang out for a second shot. That was, I think I hit, I hit a pretty, no, the one I missed, I, I shot a branch right in front of him and he knew. I've shot three arrows this year. Yeah. First arrow was at a full curl stone ram. Missed him. He was running, but he was close. Yeah. Second arrow was a mule deer that I killed. Third arrow was a miss on a high 50s bull moose at 45 yards. Yeah. Yeah, I was there that day. Not when you missed, but when you told me about it. Yeah. And I wish I could trade arrows and say, okay, I want the killing arrow to go, well, of course, to the ram. But, uh, yeah. No, it happens, man. And you can't – you've got to walk away from – I mean, you have to let it go past. There's places I showed you yesterday – like that one farmyard where I hit a fence post on a legit 210 plus mule deer. Whenever I drive by that place, which is every day in the, in the hunting season, I'll never forget that, right? So we all have our epic, epic misses. Yeah. Or wounds. Yeah. But you got to let it, you just got to move on. Well, that 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 was the yeah. other thing that I was leading up to with your words of wisdom is you're only good as your last shot. You got to get rid of the misses, get it out of your mind, shake it off. And you texted me after I missed that mule deer three times and said, Hey dude, just shake it off. You cannot let that get in your head. And I, I would say 
it happens with a compound as far as guys getting it in their head, their last miss. But there's so many catching features on a compound, meaning draw stops, mm-hmm. peep, you sight, housing, pins that can help with that. With this, it's drawn back and you're following your heart. You know, you got a half cast, decent anchor point, hopefully, mm-hmm. and uh, not as much catching feature. So if your confidence is blown, <clears throat> I can see it being a big problem. Well, I think target panic. It's probably more prevalent with traditional guys. I'm not sure on that. I mean, but, you know, with guys that are and gals who are dealing with, like, having to put a clicker on their bow, which I've thought about doing, and, you know, they go through a lot of, long, a long time of dealing with target panic. But, yeah, I don't know. So what would you, uh, like, so what do you, cause just so you, you talk about it all the time, you know, uh, if I'm going to keep shooting not all the time. We've talked about if I'm going to keep shooting it. Because after season, guys had said, uh, now you're really addicted when I had uh, shot that bull. And I told Brian, I'm like, that is not the case. This is this has been a struggle. Like, it drove me. There was times I wanted to throw that bow because being 30 yards from a 340, 350 bull and not being able to kill it is not something I've become. I'm not used to that at all. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm just not. Um but looking on the bright side of things, and this this hunt specifically never got me down because I had this stick ball in my hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, meaning like, I'm like, well, I mean, you know, it is it is what it is, right? You just keep hunting. But uh, I will say that I have seen more animals in their natural state mm-hmm. with that bow in my hand ever than I have with a compound because I just shoot them at 65, 70 yards, whatever they can, you know, wherever yeah. it may be. Where with this, I shot that mule in Colorado at five feet. I would have never have done that with the compound. I would have swung over and shot it at 80, like out of its bed. Um, so, I, I mean, I, for me, uh, you see a lot more of what animals do in their natural habitat because you're forced to sit sometimes for mm-hmm. hours and watch them because you can't get close enough. I think the interesting thing well, to see how you – like this whole the whole outdoor industry is is taking such a turn in the last couple of years with social media and everyone I mean wants to be somebody pretty much and and it's pretty easy to 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 talk, you know toot your own horn and success has has become a real big thing um, Instagram I mean you just see it all to see how you react to that when you do have a tough year and yet your reputation in part I mean. Well, Kafaru is your reputation, in my opinion. You know what you've done with with them, but uh, is how you how you react to not having success. Yeah, and and it'll be interesting. And I mean, um, what's his name? Clay Hayes. Clay sent me a, an email, and Clay's a good guy, super hardcore, traditional dude. And, and I think you've talked to him. Brian's talked to him. He's uh, the self bow guy. Self bow guy. Yeah, yeah. And, and it basically said like. Uh, uh, kind of what you just said, the pressure in the industry these days, you know, you need to get used to not filling your tags and it'll take, make it may be less stressful. Um, you know, if, if I just say, Hey, you know, sometimes you just don't fill a tag. I'm not to that point yet. I'm not mm-hmm. going to lie. I, I'm not, and I don't mind shooting mediocre animals either. I mean, I just like hunting. I, it doesn't bother me, but if you're used to being successful, um, when an animal's in a certain distance and, and whatever the case may be, and then all of a sudden you're within that distance eight, nine, ten, eleven times, and nothing has hit the ground yet because you have to close that in half mm-hmm. or, I mean, 75% less closer. You know what I mean? It's hard to get used to. I'm getting better at it. I mean, this hunt here, that biggest buck at 54 was a tough one to swallow because I would have killed that thing deader than fried chicken with a compound. And the one thing though, I got to sit 45 minutes and look at tines. And deer behavior. Insane deer. And I'm thinking the whole time, like it could get up and feed to me. It could, I had positioned perfectly and just being able to sneak that close, even 54 is close to a deer is pretty cool. I mean, you're testing everything you got for mm-hmm. stocking ability. And I mean, maybe you or, or South or somebody with more ninja skills than me, but it got to a certain point where I'm like, okay, we're getting to the blowing the deer out section here. Cause I'm not a set of car keys. Right. And I'm looking, I'm like, there's n- nothing between he and I, and there was so much 
the prickly pear cactus. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm going to step on one of those. I'll drop to the ground and he'll run anyway. So I got to that point, but it was cool because those does <clears throat> came in. I mean, they ended up winding me, but, uh, quite a bit different than, uh, Oh, he's got some primitive flair. Let, yeah. Bring that in here. Nice. Oh yeah. So that's Jeff's logo for primitive. Um, but I, I would have to say right now, I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick with it. I feel, I, dude, I, I'm a big thing about signs, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm a big guy about that. Like the voice in my head telling me where to go for the deer was. I mean, fate, whether I got an angel above me or just happenstance, I walked literally right to that deer. I mean, Brian was there. I literally walked on what? A, basically a beeline straight to where that deer was after, what did it go? 800 yards, 1,000 yards yeah. in, uh, in a canyon. I was seriously questioning if I was going to shoot the struggle stick, you know, next year or not and i mean dude there i i can't i'm chalking it up to the fact that i'm just meant to shoot a mm-hmm. traditional bow you know what i mean and i think you're gonna uh i don't know i i don't see you i mean you're there will be failure but i don't i, I see you you're you're a driven individual and uh and i think that's that that is a big issue in the traditional world is is it's okay to say i'm going out to kill mm-hmm I'm going to, I, my goal today is to go out there and to kill that animal. Yeah. Take that, whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys, it's like, I'm happy to see a metal arc singing, which is cool on the yeah. fence post, or I'm going to, sh- I would rather shoot, I'll probably get in trouble. I'd rather shoot a doe than 160 inch, you know, whitetail, which yeah. is fine, but I, I, I don't believe it. That's a lie. <laughs> I mean, and I'm like the world's worst trophy hunter and there's no, yeah way that that's true but i mean you're the thing that i uh look at is um i mean when you're talking about like if i suck that bad at it and i'll get beat up for this i I would just go take photos you know i Mm -hmm. i it is important to me to shoot an animal i mean i like i'm out there to go hunting and if if it was like if i went to the got to the point where um you know, I'm just packing a whip around and I'm never getting that close to animals and it can happen. I couldn't just say I'm okay with not shooting an animal. I literally, I, I would never, the way that I'm wired, like mm-hmm. in my brain, I would analyze it and figure out what am I doing wrong to make this happen. Now, when I say that, meaning if I just miss shots or whatever, that happens, mm-hmm. but I, opportunities, right? If I'm not getting opportunities to get in on animals, um, that would that would start to bug me a little mm-hmm. bit, and it could happen next year. I may not get a shot. Who knows? Yeah. Um, the one thing we've been talking about, which is, um, you know, we've been working talking with a firearms company, is I would okay, I wouldn't mind occasionally cranking an animal with a gun. Sure, that wouldn't bug me. And um, using the, you know, the the I would have shot a grizzly with a gun if we saw one. Um, you know, we with uh, instead of the stick, I would much rather at this point hunt 90 percent of the time with the the recurve and occasionally shoot something with a gun Mm -hmm. rather than shoot a compound i just use it as a crutch and i know i'm not mentally strong enough to stop when you can efficiently shoot 120 yards with a compound or 100 it's hard not to Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna lie not for me the way i'm hardwired i guarantee if you put me 88 yards from a bedded deer you wouldn't be able to stop me from shooting it Mm -hmm. i mean you could you'd hit me with something but if we got to 88 yards and it was iffy after that, I would just be like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to go ahead and kill it. Well, you're kind of getting away from hunting. And I'm not bashing anyone or anything else because we're just – it still didn't bug me when people do it. It doesn't mm-hmm. bug me at all. I don't – we've talked about this. Long-range rifle hunting doesn't bug me. If a guy's efficient enough, practice enough, and everything else, he wants to shoot something farther, it doesn't <clears> – I don't begrudge the guy. I just know for me, I was using my shooting ability to heavily outweigh my hunting ability. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. (laughs) Yep. But. Yeah, it's fun. No, it's, uh, no, I think you're on the right track. You're, you're, uh, yeah, I don't think that, I think you're probably stuck now doing this and, uh. Either too much stuff went right yesterday or two days ago Mm -hmm. for, not to say, hey, I should stick with this thing. Um, I mean, and it was one of the coolest stocks I've ever been on just because, you know, what the way it worked out and getting flat. It had everything in it. That mm-hmm. you, minus low crawling, which I'm okay with that. Um, didn't have that. But it had everything it needed. It had 
you know, a little bit of technical stuff going on with it, and we shot a great deer. It was all it was all good. But what uh, as far as the industry, we go back and forth making jokes about uh, people one hating me in the industry and other people doing goofy stuff in the industry. Um, when I say goofy, meaning some of the social media, Instagram, Facebook stuff. What have you seen change in the last 10, let's say five years more than anything? You've been in the game a long time. Mm. I think it's changed completely. You got, you know, heroes of mine growing up, you know, uh, Dwight Shue, uh, Larry Jones, um, some of those old school guys. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, Don Thomas, guy I really look up to. Those guys aren't even on social media. I think. Larry's on Facebook and maybe Dwight, but uh, it's easy now to promote self, mm-hmm. you know, and to, you know, um, well, it just is. And it's, I don't know, I get, my wife gets mad at me because she thinks I'm, you know, I get mad and or whatever. Somebody will do something stupid and I'll say something and then, you know, she, she thinks called, I'm a bully. She called you an internet bully. <laughs> and, I, I was there. Yeah. And, uh but but for me it's a matter of the animal the animal is number 1 and if mm-hmm. that animal is being um disrespected for the for the sake of somebody's ego i mean that just pisses me off it just it is not right period and uh and that's happening i mean there's yeah. a lot of really good dudes out there and gals but man alive is it i mean Brian and I talked about it it it's and it's hard not to get involved in that game and to, to post all the stuff, you know, to promote self and what a great hunter you are. And I don't know. I don't know. It's just really tough. I'm glad I don't make my money on what I shoot because I'd be poor. Well, but, uh, yeah. Y- yeah, you're right, though. Um, well, obviously, and we can talk in much more depth when we're in the truck of things we cannot talk about now because then everybody <laughs> would hate us both. But Exactly. And I, and I get I get a lot of, which you know, I get I get a lot of flack from different angles on certain things. Most I'm a little too blunt, but the one thing I think uh, that I've noticed and Brian and I do uh, speak about this um, is uh, when someone is, is genuine, it seems to stick out a bit more on social media than when someone is not genuine, if that makes any sense. And Brian, which, it, it sticks out a bit. And I think, um, I try to use guys like you making fun of me and uh, Brian and I talk back and forth a lot on certain things to, you know, kind of stay away from that. You mm-hmm. know, I try to promote the product or the animal or the adventure or whatever. And, and, um, and then, you know, the self promotion kind of comes whether you want it to or not really, um, if that makes any sense. But, well, I mean, you got Brian who's, who's starting that or started this and, and I don't know where you guys rank on the, I don't know any of that stuff as far as, bow hunting podcast i'm sure you're right up at the top it would be hard i mean his your guys's money whatever is going to be made from your podcast and what you do and whatever and however that works which i don't know how it's but it's not gonna be made on what brian shoots yeah you know what i'm saying yeah but it would be easy for him because he's interviewing all these guys and gals who do make a lot on what they shoot to to go that route which he doesn't need to right yeah same with you i mean with kafaru whatever and I don't know. It's a, it's a fine line, man. And cause it doesn't matter how good you are. There's somebody better. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. No, so. that's no lie for sure. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting ordeal, but, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully my luck holds out. I, I'm not going to BS anyone. I, if you would ask, I knew I'd have a, uh, an animal on the ground or two, you know, at the end of the, I didn't know. I felt confident that mm-hmm. as many hunts as we were going on, I, I would get, I'd get an animal or two, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, things are working out really, really well. Um, and I, I just hope it continues. <laughs> if it doesn't, it doesn't. And I just keep on trying, but it's been a pretty crazy year with the uh, recurve and I go to Kansas in a week. And I mean, it's cool. Cause after I get back from that, he's got a mule deer hunt and I mean, we'll basically have gone hunting what three months straight off and on. May have cost me uh, no, it did. personal <laughs> issues. <laughs> it's better. You're probably, yeah, the way you are. Uh, yeah, yeah, I need to be riding solo, I think, because I'm uh, the easiest person to live with because I'm gone all the time. But uh, it has been a fun ride so far. You hunt hard, though. Yeah. Wow. You got to get after it, for sure. 
But, uh, yeah, anyway, we should probably wrap this up or I'm going to miss my flight and be flying in on a $7,000 plane ticket to Denver because I didn't get my crap packed enough. Exactly. But, yeah, I can't say thank you enough, though, for everything. And not, yeah. not just the hunts, but, um, you know, you definitely try and keep me in line and then you make fun <laughs> of me when I'm not. So it's a good thing. And and you got good names for Brian. He call, You call it, Brian's nickname is Scrappy. <laughs> I, I don't know, know why that is. I, I think it's just because you're. I've never seen anyone eat like this man eats. And he burns it. I mean, he's a CrossFitter, right? So he burns it. Ben's the same way. Ben Laden can eat like a house. You know, I mean, he eats it. Yeah. But I just am amazed. Like at the all you can eat dinner the other night, I just, I, that was entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. I can eat a lot too. But I think Brian, at least on the hunts, he can, I think he surpasses me. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, no. <laughs> You're an idiot. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, we didn't end up coming up with a name for uh, for the other two. Oh, we got names for I got like Lamar is my like Gary. All my guys. Yeah. What about Kenton? I called him. I was calling him Sean White yesterday. Oh yeah, and then uh, I was calling Scott Scotty Too Hotty. But uh, yeah, I didn't have a name for Scott. Uh, call him Lance Armstrong. He mountain bikes a lot. Yeah. Oh, Willie Shoemaker. <laughs> oh, Lordy. That's funny. All right. Well, cool, man. Again, thank you. I can't, yeah. I can't say thanks enough. It's been a great trip. And we'll look forward to getting your daughter up for her first haunt here this spring, man. That'll be awesome. She's pumped. Yeah, because you're Mr. Incredible. And she was like, Dad, uh, you know, Mr. Incredible, was he serious? And I was like, yeah. I mean, if you want to go on the bear hunt. And so, yeah, she's pretty pumped up to, to come up and start hunting. So it'll be cool. We'll have to get Brian up there. Yeah. Get the group up. Yeah. Go early. No, really good. Grizzly, Grizzly part two. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the uh be interesting in the spring, completely different dynamic. It'll be fun. And uh and there's lots of black bears running around, which is always fun too. So be good, man. Well, cool. Well, I'll uh yeah, I'm sure I'll let you know how it goes in Kansas when I get I head to Kansas after this, let you know how that goes. But so far where oh, where is where your safety strap. Yeah, yeah, I gotta get better about wearing a harness. <laughs> man. But Brian, you got anything? Uh, people can't really hear me on the podcast. People can't really hear Brian on the podcast. But he's looking good. Brian wants to reiterate the safety harness thing. Yes. Because if you fall out and you're in a wheelchair drooling, I'm going to have you in my house. I, and I'm going to put a shot collar on you. <laughs> I told him, I said, look. Uh, Does he, he doesn't wear a harness? I wear a harness he all the time. Now? Okay, good. It's the safest thing to do. There are times. Now, in the spirit of full candor, he didn't have one on, and he was sleeping purposefully in the Ooh. tree on a platform. Okay. You fell, I have too. photos of that. Didn't you? Was it you that fell out of the tree, Stan? Yeah, he fell out of the tree, burned down. <laughs> you yeah. look like a special forces operator coming out quick. I mean, but no, you should definitely wear a harness. And I had talked with a mutual friend that fell out of one and he he broke his leg in two spots and he's like dude look and he told me what uh system to use that simplifies things for him so you actually do put it on you know he's like look if you use a cheap one that comes in the with the tree stand you're probably never going to wear it go go get this one and mm -hmm. and uh yeah definitely this has nothing to do with traditional archery but i did get lots of hate mail about not wearing a harness and him even though he's throwing me under the bus did never not ever wear one either except when he fell out of it That's <laughs> the other tree. well you still didn't have it on <laughs> yeah so but no we're we're definitely going to be wearing uh tree stain or tree or uh harnesses when we're i gotta wait till tag yeah i'm gonna hunt coos down in uh in arizona that'll be fun I'm sure they'll thrash me, but it's fun <laughs> to get in new country to hunt. So yeah, it yeah, it'll be it'll be cool. So, all right, we're gonna wrap it up, right. pack up, and fly back to the uh, United States of America. <laughs> Empress to Denver. Yep. Thanks again. You betcha. All right, stay gritty, friends, hunters, outdoorsmen. Lend me your ears, please. Take this moment to listen to this excerpt from the Gritty Bowman film, Back to Traditions. Despite our ever-changing, ever-indignant world with its growing ignorance of and indifference to the ways of the wild, I remain a predator, pitying those who revel in artificiality and synthetic success while regarding me and my kind as relics of a time and place no longer valued or understood. 
I stalk a real world of dark wood and tall grass stirred by a restless wind blowing across sunlit water and beneath star-strewn sky. And on those occasions when I choose to kill, to claim some small part of nature's bounty for my own, I do so by choice, quickly, with the learned efficiency of a skilled hunter. Further, in my heart and mind, I know the truth and make no apologies for my actions or my place in time. Others around me may opt to eat only plants, nuts, and fruits. Still others may employ faceless strangers to procure their meats, their leather, their feathers, and all those niceties and necessities of life. Such is their right, of course, and I wish them well. All I ask in return is no one begrudge me, and all of us who may answer the primordial stirrings within our hunter's souls, my right to do some of these things myself. What you just heard is a quote from M.R. James. We truly live in a world that is largely ignorant and indifferent to the ways of the wild. And although some regard us as relics of a time and place no longer valued or understood, we have the opportunity to change the way these people view the hunter and the hunt. We can share our experiences and nature's bounty with those who employ these faceless strangers. And by so doing, we make a difference, not just for ourselves, but for the wild animals in the wild places we care so deeply about. Never stop sharing your passion for hunting and the outdoors. Our wild animals and our wild places depend on it. We want to thank Kefaru, Mountain Ops, Hoyt, Vortex, Phelps, Black Eagle Arrows, and Crispy Boots for supporting the Gritty Bowman. We love these companies and the people behind them. They truly make fantastic products. Please support them whenever you can. And as always, good luck on your hunts and stay gritty. This is Ty Stubblefield and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. Gritty Bowman. <laughs>